pro-life, you say pro-woman. Pro-life. Pro-woman. Pro-life. Pro-life. Pro-woman. Hello, everyone. I'm Reagan Barklage, the Western Regional Director for Students for Life of America. And I want to thank you all for being here today. I want to thank all of our incredible speakers and other pro-life organizations that are here represent the wonderful dirt work that they do here in Missouri. Today we're here as we urge the state of Missouri to halt abortions from happening here at the most dangerous Planned Parenthood in the nation. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Planned Parenthood has no one to blame but themselves for this possible closure. They could have acted like a real medical facility, but instead they've been refusing since March to comply with the state's very reasonable requests. This facility has had 80 ambulance calls since January 1, 2009. 74 of those are confirmed medical emergencies. Women are coming to this facility looking for help and instead are leaving these doors in a stretcher. Pregnancy is not a disease cured by abortion. This is not health care. This is not even safe abortion. This is barbaric and something must be done immediately. Planned Parenthood claims to be a medical facility, and yet they won't comply with the law and abide by basic health facility standards. Women are being harmed here, and no one is talking about it. Missouri people should be outraged. Today, we have an incredible lineup of speakers who have dedicated their lives to protecting women and pre-born children. We have Stacy Washington from Stacy on the Right radio show. Yay! We have Brian Westberg with Foley Coalition for Life St. Louis. Woo! Jacinta Florence with St uh, Students for Life of America. Woo! Abby Bergman who is the SLU, with SLU Med Students for Life here in St. Louis. Woo! And we also have Leah Darrow with us today who is an international speaker, writer, and podcast host. Her goal is to help women do something beautiful with their lives. And what's more beautiful than choosing life for your child? And then finally, you'll be hearing from a former Planned Parenthood manager, Sue Thayer. Sue knows exactly what happens inside Planned Parenthood's doors because she's worked there. So first up, we have Stacy Washington. Okay, I don't need this little stand here, obviously. So she said three minutes. I'm going to try to keep it to three minutes. But the reason why we're here is because we're standing on hallowed ground. It's the place in Missouri where it's lawful for babies to be killed before they're born. There are a lot of problems with this clinic. And a lot of things have gone on here that should never happen in a country like ours. America should not be known for our exportation of abortion or our abortion on demand policies that put us within the ranks of countries like North Korea and China. We should not be that country. The war that's being waged here isn't really against the people in there though. It's not the ones who are wearing these rainbow vests. The war we're waging is in the heavenlies. We're fighting an enemy that comes to kill steal and destroy and he has done so since roe v wade passed in 1973 to the tune of 24 states of americans 24 states of americans who are no longer here every social ill that we have in this country can be traced back to our allegiance to abortion our taxation problems our budgetary issues our social problems our gun problems and i'm a pro-life pro-second amendment person so what we have to do is keep fighting. No matter what the courts say, no matter what the Supreme Court says, no matter what the people that you live with, that you care about, the people that you really honestly respect who support abortion, no matter what they say, we have to stand on what the Word of God says. The Word of God says, before I formed you, I knew you. I knit you together in your mother's womb. He said that before he formed the deep, he knew every one of us. He sent his son to die on the cross for every one of us, all of our collective sins, every person who's ever lived and every will live, all of our sins collectively paid for on the cross by Jesus Christ. That kind of love defies abortion. It defies what goes on in this building. And we will continue to fight until this building becomes another pregnancy resource center. We stand in agreement. We stand in agreement. If you agree with me, I just want one shout together in unison one shout together, 
pro-life, pro-woman on three. One, two, three. Pro-life, pro-woman! Thank you for having me today. I guess I'll use the podium here. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> um, my name is Brian Westbrook. I'm the executive director of the Coalition for Life here in St. Louis, Missouri. Coalition for Life has been out on these sidewalks for the last 10 years, and we've seen over 12,000 Missourians come out to the sidewalk to first and foremost pray for an end to abortion. So we want to, yes, praise be to God. So in 2011, we launched our uh, sidewalk ministry, and we've had an opportunity right here behind us. We've had an opportunity to see 2,386 women choose life for their unborn child instead of going inside and getting an abortion. Praise be to God. This all really started when I was standing just where you are on a Saturday afternoon. Now, the reason it's a Saturday afternoon is because I procrastinated and I told my wife, I don't really want to go out there. It's not very popular to go out in front of an abortion clinic and hold a sign or say a prayer or anything else. And so I procrastinated and I pushed it off over and over again until finally my wife says, come on, let's go out. It was a Saturday, exactly, thanks be to God for good, amazing spouses, right? And so she brought me out here and no one else was here. No crowd, no cameras, nothing else. We were here together. We decided to fold our hands and pray. And everybody thought we were number one. As everyone was going by, they called us number one. They must have had a broken finger though. I don't, I'm not sure <laughs> about that one. But they yelled and screamed. We didn't have any signs, no literature, no cameras, just us and our prayers. And as I watched, my very first time out here, I watched as a little white SUV, well, a large white SUV comes out and picks up a young lady who was in tears. She spins around here and stops as she cries uncontrollably. And in this dirt right here, I drop to my knees and I throw my hands up and I say, God, take care of this little girl and we'll make sure that all the other women here are protected and one day this abortion facility will be shut down. Praise be to God. And so we continue. Everyone has asked me, well, what about when they stop doing abortions here? What are you going to do? Well, we're just going to continue doing what we do, and that's serving women who are affected by abortion. Yeah. Serving women who are protected by unplanned pregnancies. We're going to continue to do that. Now, in the last couple seconds, uh, I did happen uh, happened to be at the court hearing this morning and so I wanted to give you guys a little bit of an update to what just happened uh, a few hours ago. Basically what's what's being uh, argued is not whether or not uh, women are being hurt here, which they are. We've seen and we've documented the 74 ambulances that Reagan's uh, was referencing earlier. We've been out here taking those photographs and documenting exactly what's happened. That's our team providing that information to the public. But, absolutely, praise be to God. But what's being argued today is whether or not the Attorney General's office has the authority to restrict a license while an investigation is going on. Praise be to God, right? And so what we want to do is we want to continue to pray for the judge, continue to pray for those who are, who are um, fighting this fight. We pray for the Attorney General's office and we pray for an end to abortion here in the state of Missouri. Thanks be to God. Thank you. What's going on? Hey, we're here. hey it's good that you're here. I'm glad. Um, so I'm Jacinta. I'm the new regional coordinator for Missouri and Arkansas. I moved here like last week to work with Students for Life of America and I stand before you today as a young person who is outraged that this clinic is still allowed to be operating, especially after Reagan mentioned earlier 
with the 80 ambulances that have been called and 74% of them being known medical emergencies. So it's clear that women are not safe here. Missouri should be outraged by this. We need to do something about this. And I'm really glad that each and every one of you are here today to bring awareness to the horrific activity that is happening inside of this Planned Parenthood. As a young adult, I am upset that Planned Parenthood targets my peers as 80% of Planned Parenthoods are placed within five miles of a college campus. And we know where this is placed. This is right down the street from SLU. So what does that say about this place? So this needs to end. And it starts with each and every one of you here today using your voices and your resources to end abortion. So I don't want this to be just a one-time rally that you guys just show up to because there's all of this going on in the media. It's really good that you're here, but I want this to be an invitation to continue to work alongside us and the pro-life movement to get this place shut down. Excuse me, that was loud. Um, and I remember, I'm from Oklahoma, and I was at a rally one time, and the speaker, okay. <laughs> I was at a rally one time in my hometown of Tulsa, Oklahoma, and I remember the speaker getting up, and this was before I got involved in the pro-life movement full time. She had said that if um, the only activity you do is this year, it was the March for Life, then it is not enough. And so that's the challenge that I want to issue to you guys today. If this is your only pro-life activity this year, it is not enough. So if you're a young person on a college campus, talk to me and we can get like a pro-life group started on your campus. If you're in high school and you don't have a pro-life group on your campus, talk to me before you leave today and we can make that happen. Uh, young adults, talk to, uh, we have some representatives from St. Louis Pro-Life Future, a new group for young adults. Talk to them, we need you in this battle. We need your continual support and your involvement. We need your enthusiasm, your creativity, and your joy to win this battle for life. So thank you very much. Hi everyone, my name is Karen, Karen Dolkemper. I'm the Senior Director of Pro-Life for the Archdiocese of St. Louis, Missouri. Thank you all so very much for being here today. I want to share with you, anytime there is violence or an injustice towards women, focus on one key word, and this is a key word. The word is peace, a peace we want to reign in our hearts and a peace we want to ultimately reign in our nation. P-E-A-C-E, -E. and I'm gonna use that as acrostic, so to bring up five points, each letter, P-E-A-C-E, -E, is gonna stand for something critical and key that all of us can do right now, right here, right today. All right, first letter, P, stands for prayer. Prayer united to sacrifice is the most powerful force on earth. Prayer united to sacrifice, the most powerful force on earth, so keep praying. In particular, specifically pray for the women the women who are entering this clinic, pray for their health and safety, as well as pray for, as Brian mentioned, the attorney general, the team of lawyers, and the judge. Pray that the judge will make the best decision possible, the best decision to truly protect pregnant women and their children. So we wanna pray, that's number one. The second letter is E. E stands for educate. Michaeline Friedenberg and others use this term about reproductive grief and loss. They talk about how abortion changes you. Abortion changes you and how women experience deep reproductive grief and loss. And if you're not sure how an abortion impacts a woman, please see the movie Unplanned and bring your friends and family, students and others to see the movie Unplanned. You'll see firsthand how an abortion negatively harms a woman and harms a child, of course. So I wanna share with you, go see the movie Unplanned and or talk to my colleague, Sue there, he'll be up in a minute. She's a former Planned Parenthood director. One other thing in terms of E and educate, the term healthcare, that's used loosely. Think about this, healthcare, what is healthcare? Healthcare is life affirming. Healthcare is supposed to promote the physical and mental well being. Healthcare restores. Abortion is and does none of these things. None of these things. So educate people about what abortion really is. The next letter is A for act. 
And this is a loose translation loose translation from Edmund Burke, talking about evil will triumph or evil will prevail. When good men and women do nothing, they remain silent. Do not remain silent. Pray, educate, act. The next letter, the next letter, uh, the next letter is C for commit. And all that means is put some skin in the game. So pray, educate, and act more than one time. God is faithful. Keep doing what you're doing. The last and final letter is E, and E stands for evangelize. And that sounds like a big, scary word, and it really isn't. Here's what evangelize means, and this is what you all are doing right now, right here today. Evangelize means speak the truth with love. Speak the truth with love. Connect with compassion. Connect with compassion. What you do on the sidewalk and wherever, in college campuses, in your churches, you share with them the options brochure. It says unplanned pregnancy, looking for options, you're not alone. We have free resources, free safe resources. Your life is sacred, your baby's life is sacred. You don't have to do this. We stand ready to assist you every step of the way. And now, Sarah, if you could uh, give me this. This, if you want to know more about all the resources, this is the United Body of Christ. I am so proud of St. Louis. StLouisReview.com. Uh, stlrespectlife.org, Arch STL Respect Life, and what this says is Catholic, other pro-life agencies, we are here to help women facing an unplanned pregnancy beyond the birth of a child. We will walk with you every step of the way. Free confidential resources, food, clothing, financial assistance, maternity shelter, counseling, job training, Woo! education. We stand united. StatelessReview.com. And finally, for anybody who suffered an abortion, we have post-abortive healing with the Project Rachel Ministry. Focuses on, fo uh, focus, uh, focus on excuse me, hope and healing, free professional counseling. Again, to be pro-life is to be pro-woman. Pro means to be in support of, in favor of. So if you support life, you support women. If you're in favor of life, you're in favor of women. Pro-life equals pro-woman. Women deserve real options and hope, not abortion. Praise God. Thank you all very, very much. Keep praying. Good afternoon. How is everybody doing? I am Kathy Fork, the campaign director of the Columbia Planned Parenthood. You have heard of the Columbia Planned Parenthood, right? The wannabe abortion facility that has lost nine abortion doctors in the past 10 years and is not doing abortions now. Yeah, that one. We are holding strong there in mid-Missouri and we are praying that St. Louis will also lose its license because of its deplorably unsafe medical conditions, just like the Columbia Planned Parenthood did because of its disgusting conditions. Moldy suction tubing, anyone? That brought them down when that was shown in court. I am sure that you have heard in the news that Planned Parenthood is balking at answering the Department of Health and Senior Services request to interview, in particular, three of its resident trainees from Washington University. There is a tangled web here. Dr. Teresa Madden, who performs abortions at St. Louis Planned Parenthood, is also the chief of the Family Planning Department of Washington University. I am sure you wonder, as I do, who is sending residents to St. Louis Planned Parenthood for abortion training? I speak today also as the servant leader of Team Play, a group of Missourians across the state who are working to see abortion end in our state through prayer. Lots of prayer. Legislation, action, which is what you're doing here today, and you, the people of Missouri. We are at the brink of that realization as Planned Parenthood, as it did in Columbia, is taking it to the courts. Spoiler alert, as in Columbia, they will lose in the end because because how they totally disregard basic safety regulations. Did you know that St. Louis Planned Parenthood's complication rate is four times higher than the national average? Think about that, four times higher. Even one ambulance is too many. 
Abortion is not safe. Thank God that we have Governor Mike Parson, a true pro-woman governor, a governor, a governor who truly cares about the safety of Missouri women and is fighting hard for them. I have a little action item for you today. My team that I brought down from Columbia, we have gathered photos of women being taken by ambulance from this place to the tune of 78 women since 2009. About every 40 days and over 50% for life-threatening hemorrhaging. And so my team right now is gonna go through and give you a little gift, a poster. We want you to take this home with you as a reminder of two things. Planned Parenthood hurts women and Governor Parson supports Missouri women. Our team is passing them out right now. So please keep it, share it, and please stand with us in a photo of all of you at the end of the rally, holding your very own poster that reminds you of this. Planned Parenthood hurts women. Governor Parson supports Missouri women. So don't be shy. Come forward after the last speaker for a group picture. And I thank you so much for coming out today. And together, let us dream and pray for the day when this abortion facility, which has hurt so many women and children, will be out of business. And I believe that time is coming soon. Thank you. Man, thank you all for being here. This is so encouraging to me, and praise God. My name's Abby. I'm a second year medical student at St. Louis University School of Medicine, and I'm here today because there is no such thing as a safe abortion. Any medical procedure in which a growing human being dies cannot be considered safe. Any medical procedure in which the objective is to kill a growing human being should not be legal. There is no such thing as a safe abortion because according to the CDC's data, in America, more children die in one year than the leading causes of death in adults, heart disease or cancer. Pregnancy is a natural physiological function, not a disease state. Something as preventable as abortion takes more lives in a year than any actual diseases that modern medicine has yet to solve. There's no such thing as a safe abortion because not only does a growing human being die, the mother is left, unfortunately, with the repercussions of trauma. I've seen women in clinic that are ashamed, broken, left empty because of their abortions. I've seen women that have had more than 20 abortions, women that pray for their born children to never find out, and women that are afraid to even talk about the effect it has had on them. There's no such thing as a safe abortion. This Planned Parenthood has, a, has had 80 ambulances called, and 74 of them were confirmed medical emergencies. There's no such thing as a safe abortion, and this stops here in our home state of Missouri. Shut Planned Parenthood down. There is hope beyond abortion. There is life beyond abortion. Women deserve to know that they're loved and supported, and that abortion is not the answer they're looking for. Let's share that love, hope, and life. Thank you. Good afternoon. I am Leah Darrow, I'm a St. Louisan. I am proudly, proudly pro-woman and I am proudly pro-life. We are here today because we love life and we love and respect the dignity of all humans, even the smallest of those. And because as of this amazing pro-life St. Louis community, we are here, we won't back down. We won't back down to the bullies. We won't back down to hate. We will stand in peace and love and we will always stand up for life and the respect of all human life from conception to natural death. We are pro-life, we are pro-woman, and we are pro-family. The right to liberty does not give us license to hurt other human beings. It just doesn't. All life is unique and it's unrepeatable. 
Our babies, too, are unique and unrepeatable, the born and the pre-born. And we have a duty to protect and defend all life and to compassionately help life. Again, we are pro-life and we are pro-woman. The preborn child is the most vulnerable member of the human family, yet it is the least protected today. Under federal law now, abortion is legal throughout all stages of pregnancy up until birth. These innocent, innocent human beings are entitled to the most basic human right, which is life, and they deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. We know that 900 pre-born children die, will die today in Planned Parenthood facilities across America. Planned Parenthood is the nation's leading abortion chain, ending the lives of over 320,000 American children every single year. Again, the right to liberty does not give us license to hurt other human beings. This particular St. Louis Planned Parenthood location has, as you've heard, over 80 ambulance calls. And of those 80 ambulance calls, 74 were confirmed medical emergencies. That's 92%. But where is the health care for women here? Are we just about killing babies? Are we not about the health care for women as well? I know that he's in support. So we know that we must do something about this. We must stand up for all life. Planned Parenthood, the reality is that Planned Parenthood does hurt women. Besides the fact that it's a facility to kill our children, they won't even adhere to the law and up to the codes to help their own medical facility help women survive an abortion. They won't even help women. So what is that? That's not health care. That's just killing babies for the sake of anything. And abortion should not be the reason that we can do whatever we want to anybody. We must band together to insist in a world that provides women all nonviolent options for their health care and for their families. Killing our children is not going to bring us more freedom. Killing our future will not bring us more progress. The solution to the many problems of today, my friends, is not less of us. But it's more care, more compassion, more work to help people and to give all all of us nonviolent options for our health care, for our lives, for our children, and for our families and for our mothers so that we can truly live in this beautiful and free land. The truth is that life is the empowering choice. The choice that we should always be promoting is life. That is the empowering choice for every single person on the planet. Life, my friends. And we should all have a chance at it. Thank you so much. God bless. Hello everyone, my name is Sue Thayer. I'm from Storm Lake, Iowa. Um, I, Missouri is near and dear to my heart because you are so pro-life and like this close to being abortion free, right? Yes. Yeah. So, and this crowd is a, a, just a testimony to how many people here care and love life. Well, some of you have heard my story. I know I used to run a Planned Parenthood. I was a, a clinic director. Um, when I come to Planned Parenthoods, I love to see the staff and the volunteers because I can kind of identify with them. I loved what um, Stacy said about our battle is not against flesh and blood. It's not against the folks that work here. I looked up some news stories on this and I saw the manager. She was in a, a story and her name is Kawana, I believe, and she's a clinic director. And I looked at her picture and I thought how wonderful it would be if we could sit down and, and visit because hearts are changed one at a time and one on one. And that's why being out here is so important. I've been watching Brian over here and he literally runs out to those cars. And what a testimony he is. And he may be the last stop for someone going in for abortion, but then a few feet away, we have our escorts and they're literally beckoning, saying, come on in, come on in. And isn't that how it is with sin and wrong decisions? It, it calls to us and it beckons us. The folks that work here and volunteer here um, are not evil in and of themselves, although they're doing bad things. I know because I did them. Most of them don't know God. 
Correct. Most of them don't know God. They are lost. Um, the world is broken, of course, and we need Jesus. But I worked at Planned Parenthood in Storm Lake as the uh, center director for almost 18 years. Um, we had but one ambulance during that time, and I won't go into details, but um, lots of stuff happened in those years there. I started out thinking I was doing a good thing and helping women, and over the course of the years there, I came to see them in a different light, and I also came to know the Lord Jesus as my Savior and could really no longer work there, which was, I mean, if God can bring me out of that darkness and put my feet on a firm foundation, it's proof that he can save anybody. Amen, yeah, <laughs> amen. But once I finally got out of there, I thought I'm going to ignore what goes on, and they started doing webcam abortion. Hopefully some of you know what that is. If you saw Unplanned, it's a chemical or medication abortion that's um, done with no doctor on site. So non-medical people are doing transvaginal ultrasounds and abortions. It's a bad thing. And it started in Iowa. Um, I couldn't stand the thought of doing it. I still live in the same town that I lived in all those years that I worked there. Ended up getting fired. Two years later, I just felt so convicted and I had heard of 40 Days for Life because I know that Planned Parenthood hates it. When you're out here praying on the sidewalk, are they happy inside? No, because women turn around and don't go in and chaos reigns inside. So in Storm Lake, I said, let's look up 40 Days for Life and see what they're about. And it was the last day to sign up for the campaign that fall, 2011, and I clicked the submit button and signed up to be a leader and ended up having a 40 days for life campaign outside of where I worked. And I know it's a little bit scary to stand on the sidewalk and pray, you know, especially the first time you go, but I was terrified of meeting my former coworkers and uh, I, I did it. I faced them and it was good. And we were able to have 480 hours of prayer there. And then two months later, we saw our abortion facility in Storm Lake close. It was the first one of 21 in Iowa that have closed. Yes. We were up to 29 Planned Parenthood abortion facilities, which is more than any state per capita. Now we're down to eight. So we're making progress, but we are following along behind Missouri and trying to catch up. We dream of the day when webcam abortion is no more. And Iowa also is this close to being an abortion-free state. So to you all, I say, come out come out during 40 days come out every day and be here and be a witness stand up for life i remember calling people about coming down and praying in storm lake and they would say you want me to pray for an hour about what you know and so we had a lot of work to do in storm lake but through 40 days for life all the churches and all the people that didn't necessarily agree on a lot of stuff came together and now we have a wonderful pro-life pregnancy center there so miracles come when God's people pray. And you may see an Abbey um, come out someday. You may see one of the escorts change their heart. And even if you don't see that, you are planting seeds that have an eternal difference for God's kingdom. And we must never quit. Thank you so much for what you do, and God bless. Well, we were so glad you were fired, Sue. Yeah. Well, thank you all for joining us today as we stand up for the safety of women. And please be sure to take these signs home as a reminder of what we stand for. And it's so important that we're exposing Planned Parenthood to our friends and family. So please make sure you're telling them of what's going on. Now, I'd like to conclude this rally with our chant. I say pro-life. You say pro-women. Pro-life. 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 Thank you all for being here, and to the press, we'll have our speakers here available for interviews afterwards. Thank you all.